it's funny because before I met you, I associated you with a lot of beef. You know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, was, there was a lot of beef. Because and, but that was that was people coming for you, or was it like were you a were you a beef like instigator? No, no, it so, was just clashing on the lines. Yeah, so you were just defending yourself, basically. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, Ghost he recruited like EA to go over me. Um, there was a bunch of dudes peace. like going over me. Yeah, for no reason. I was just like, what the fuck is this about? So I never, I never got to meet EA or whatever. But then Diva was in a, a show, oh. and she was showing her artwork or whatever. And I was just like, oh, let me just go do a walkthrough or whatever. So I go, and I run into Smith and Cat, and they were like, oh, your friends here. And I was like, who's that? And he was like, EA. And I was like, nah. I was like, gonna point him out for me, right? So they were like, nah, they don't want to do it or whatever. And then they were like, ah, what the hell? So they give me the walkthrough or whatever. I guess EA caught wind and saw me there, mm -hmm. and he jet it. Ah, shit. And he called DG the next day and was like, you know, tell Peek I'm sorry. You know, these guys, you know, they amped me up to go over him and this, that, and the other thing. I yeah. was like, yo, Jason, that's... But yeah, then I already passed away, so I never got to meet him. Right, or, right. You know, I was a little drunk that night, and yeah, that would have got ugly. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good thing it didn't happen then, man. I, I'm a just from like me as a as an observer and a consumer of graffiti like a fan of both of you guys but um but i yeah. just think it's crazy how somebody doesn't even know you you know it's like yeah i mean i feel like they have so much hate for you the same thing happened with kez five i mean he had so much hate for me but i don't understand where that came from you know it's funny bro i so i got the outline for this interview going here and like at the towards the end of the interview i got a list of like people that i was just gonna be like hey i'm gonna list these people off in no order and uh, you know, I just want to hear like your, your take or whatever you want to say about them. Mm -hmm. But I think the way that this is going, like, I just kind of want to go with the flow a little bit. And, um, I want to hear about the Kez five. I want to hear about the YKK beef. You oh know what my I God. Mean? Yeah. yeah. That was, and, that was a big beef, man. It and I like... think also something that I want to get this down on wax is the infamous photo of, uh, of Kez five wearing like a night, the hospital gown or whatever. Oh yeah. When he, yeah. when he jumped up out of the hospital and he did that highway spot during the day. Yeah. Posted that he, he put you up on that spot. Yeah, he did. And I, and I thought that was so crazy before I met you. Cause I was like, damn, I thought those guys had like beef, like forever. Yo, beef. it was a hard beef. It was just like, you, he even said, I ain't going nowhere. This is going to be till, for life. Yeah. And then I was like, oh shit. I heard he was sick. So I reached out to him on Instagram. I was like, yo, dude, I heard you're sick, man. Sorry to hear that. Because, you know, I went through that shit with Tabitha. Right. So, yeah, I, I felt some type of way that he got sick or whatever. And then we started talking. And then, you know, he was sending me pictures of his artwork and all of this. And I was just like, I didn't even know he, he was capable of doing art like that. Wow. I thought he was just a bomber and a tag, you know, doing fill-ins and tags. Uh -huh. But he was an actually, actually a good artist. Yeah. And I was like, holy shit. So... He was just like, I'm sorry that you guys, you know, I, I did this all, all these years, put you through this shit or whatever. I was like, dude, it's a game, you know? It's like, I, I don't hold on to any hostilities towards you. Yeah, we're, you we're don't have any open beefs at all right now, right? Nah, I was just like, you know, we're just playing a game. How did the YKK beef start? Was it a YKK thing or was it just you and Kez? Five? No, it was the whole crew. It was the whole crew. Yeah, I think yeah. the only one that didn't put his name on me was Spot. Okay, because I remember seeing like a production of yours or whatever, and there was like a blimp up top. Oh, yeah, that was the Graffiti Hall of Fame. And you wrote something like YKK, All My Sons, or something like well, that? Well, the thing is, is, like, they did, I painted the night before so I wouldn't have to deal with the riffraff that goes on there in the daytime. Okay. So that shit was still fresh, and they went there and ragged it. I was like, they did the stack up, the one dude standing on the other guy's shoulders. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I painted up high for that reason. I was just like, maybe they can't reach it or whatever. But yeah, yeah they found a way up there and they ragged it. So Within I was like, a day, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. Doing? yeah. So it didn't run long. I, mean, I was like, oh, shit. So Ezo calls me up. He was like, yo, they went over your shit in the Graffiti Hall of Fame. I was like, really? So I went back. I was like, fuck it. All right. Now you, now I just play with them a little. Yeah. So I, I, re, I fixed it or whatever. And then I put a label on the back of the blimp that said, uh, uh, what was it? Peak Vic, uh, the official YKK mentor. Yeah, that's right. On the that's back right. by the tail there. Who, who of that crew would you say was like the most... Like you, you guys were going like back and forth with. It was scuffing, scuffing Kez. Scuffing Kez. Yeah, yeah. 
a lot I don't of know if, like if Spot went over me like anonymously, but he never actually put his name on me. The, the whole rest of the crew, I've seen their names on it. Um, and I know you're you you you're like at least friendly with Spot these days. Uh, what's your relationship like with Scuff? Did you guys ever squash it? Or? Yeah, I mean that's it's. I mean, it's it's all a game, man. Yeah, seriously. But I tell you one thing, he was definitely a worthy adversary. That's you cool. know, they didn't think I was going to go to the extremes that I went through, being that I'm an older graffiti writer. You were older back then to them, is what yeah. you're saying. Yeah. So they were you're... hanging. They, actually, they, they hung out with PG. Oh, okay. This is a crazy story because, like, PG got locked up and I hadn't seen him in like 10 years. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to work on the subway on the A line. And I saw he had a sticker on a poster. And I was like, oh, shit, that's interesting. I was. And then they posted over it or whatever. And then I see he had another sticker. Like, just going to him from work. And I was like, oh, shit, so he's traveling through here. So I wrote out a sticker or whatever. I was like, yo, PG, what up, man? Love this, that. And the other thing. No and, cell and phones, no way, no, no, no fucking no. email, none of that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I smacked it up next to his sticker. Yeah. And then I'm going through, and I see another stick. He was like, yo, I'm, at, I'm back at my mom's house. This shit come through. He whatever. wrote it on a sticker? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he put that up on, on next to the stickers. I was just like, oh, shit. So I went to see him. Mm -hmm. So he was actually pretty tight with Kez and Scuff and the whole YKK crew. Yeah, no, I mean, he's a Bushwick legend. Yeah, you know what I exactly. Mean? He's a like Papa Smurf, man. He's like the mayor. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, he was tight with them. But I used to just, he'd be hanging out with them or whatever, and I'd just come down to Bushwick, pick him up, and then just go hang out somewhere else. With your, like, tight relationship with PG, because from, like, I, I associate you with PG, like, yeah. heavily in a way. He's how like my big brother. And then how was it that if he's if he's down with YKK and shit, how did you wind up beefing with them? I don't. I, maybe they felt some type of way that I, I wasn't like more social with them. Yeah. You know, th I, maybe they felt shunned that I was just coming down there, and taking PG and hanging out. I don't know. But um, the beef started. Kez says that I went over a VE filling with one of my grids. We painted like the whole building or whatever. And he said there was a VE on there. If there was a VE on there, it wasn't an actual VE. It, gotcha. was, it was somebody that did the VE. Gotcha, or maybe yeah. he did the VE. Right. But that's the, that's the reason he gave me Okay. for starting to go over me. Gotcha. Meanwhile, Rebs was just like, you know, those. you want to piss them off, just become a king. You know, they're, they're just going to come after you yeah. or whatever. So I was like, right, fuck it. So we were warring heavy. To the point where I was just like, you know what? I'm tired of wasting paint like going over these. I'm just going to do my own fucking thing. And yeah. I just started walking past their feelings. I was like, you know what? <laughs> Fuck it, man. Yeah. But definitely Scuff was a worthy adversary. I, I, I hand it to him, man. I mean, like, I heard they when I heard they had the, the Manhattan Bridge on lock with fillings. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, shit. So I took the train over. I saw... They had that bridge on lock. Yeah. The posts. And right. The houses up there, whatever. So I was like, oh, shit. So anyway, I, I saw the colors that they used. And then I went back. I took out most of everything that they did up there. I buffed out their outlines so I wouldn't have to do fill-ins. Yeah, And yeah, just put yeah. my own outlines. Right. Yeah, one of the, one of the classic So anyway, tricks. after PG passed away or whatever... I had to go to the wake. That's like my big brother, or whatever. And the whole crew was there. I was like, "Fuck it, I don't care." And they they acted respectful to PG. You know, nothing broke off, or whatever. So we're dropping roses into PG's gravesite, and Scuff and I are standing side by side. And he turned around. And he was like, "Yo, this this shit ends here." I was like, "Bet, definitely." He was like, "I got a wall for you to paint for him." Wow. And that's like right around the corner from PG's house wow. where he lived. Crazy. And I was like, that's fucking awesome, man. That's but he actually mentioned, like, after the fact, he he mentioned the bridge. He was like, yo, that bridge shit, I felt that. And I was big of him to, to actually admit that. Yeah. Well, I feel like he's a he's he loves graffiti through and through from what I've gathered. He's you know? definitely a real dude, man. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah, shout out to Scott for sure. Yeah. Um, Oh uh, shit! Sorry, that's just a crazy. That's a crazy story for me to think about. Just like uh, PG passing away, and um, and I assume too, like you guys were all brought back together when DG passed away as well. Yeah, 
Like, yeah. I mean, that was a mutual friend of, of everybody's. Yeah, I feel everybody. like. he, 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 everyone loved DG, man. That yeah. guy was such a character. Right. He was awesome. He was awesome. Man, I, 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 I regret, like, I only got to meet him one time, and but he was, he was hilarious, man. He was like, he was, he, there was a room full of like, probably like 40 writers, like sketchbooks out, like people doing, and he was like talking about, he's like, I'm the best at this Yo, shit. Yo, his laugh and shit, yeah. he's just like, he's like the loudest one in the room that laughed. Yeah. Oh yeah. my God, man. Oh Seriously. man. Um, all right, hold on. Let me consult these questions because I don't want to forget anything here. So yeah, when he passed away, that was that was rough. Yeah, that was a that was a rough one. I think everybody felt that one because that was that was after the internet came around. Like you know, now when a writer passes away, like everybody feels it. Like the whole culture feels it. You mm -hmm. know, the crazy thing about DG is that he always stayed in touch with me throughout the years. Yeah, always. Like he always found me where I was. And, yeah. And stayed in touch. No, I seen and he did he 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 did like a peak piece like off yeah, of the yeah. M line that I saw. I saw that when I actually like first moved to New York. So that was really cool. Um some spots I wanted to, to ask about. Uh the the DKNY spot on, on how oh, that was awesome. How long <laughs> did that one run? That was with that was with Donia, right? That ran for like a week. And That's it? it, yeah, bro. That the photo of that though is legendary. Like just the seeing the DKNY mural and then pff, graffiti up yeah. top. Yeah, people weren't really doing hang downs off the top. No, were and they? the crazy thing is, is, like, Donya was a beast back then, man. And, like yeah. she was, she was doing it. So yeah. anyway, she knew somebody in the studio at the top floor of that place, so she had access to the roof. And she was like, she hit me up. She was like, let's do the spot or whatever. And I was like, all right, cool. But there was like a. That building's so high up. There's like a little wall, like at the edge of the roof or whatever. And like she's standing up, like with her knees against that wall, like doing a roll down with these, you know, the big Bro. rollers, not the nine inch rollers, but the, the really long ones that scenic The like 18 inch joints. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. She was using those. And I was just like, and the pole, that shit's that heavy. That loaded up, yeah. That Lo loaded up yeah. with paint is crazy. I think people don't really understand. Like, if, if anybody's listening to this and you had never have done it before, just walk up to the edge of a building that's like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, 10 yeah. stories high and just just stand over it and look over it. Because normal hang downs, you're putting your the walls up on your chest. Well, that's what I was doing. Right. She, she was standing up, and I see this, like, dirt like that's accumulated <sighs> in the corner of the roof. And I was like, no, 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 no. Stop, <laughs> stop, man. Because, like, I don't want to see her, like, spill over that nah. freaking little wall. So I was like, just put your chest on the wall like this yeah. and then roll down. So, yeah, she she she, she, she abided. But, I yeah. mean, one gust of wind. Oh, no, dude, she was yeah. a beast, though, man. Yeah, because y'all had the spot, too, <coughs> off of the, uh, the FDR, right? That one spot that's kind of, like, oh, yeah, up, way yeah, uptown. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think there's, like... Like that was advertisements cool. on it now, but y'all had the top of that. Yeah, I love that spot. That, mm -hmm. that spot was awesome. I never got to see it, but I've seen the photos. She know? climbed the billboard. We were leaving from there. We had spray paint or whatever. She climbed all the way up to the top of the billboard off the, the highway there and was doing tags and fill-ins. I was just like, holy shit, man. And that's crazy, too, because at the time, I remember I saw a magazine feature. It was like Diva, Donia... And I think Seventeen and Claw were in that feature yeah, too. It was and like then, the ladies and in hope, graffiti. Hope. Oh, and Hope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they did were... a wall. It was like Charlie's Angels. That's crazy. But um, the the silhouette had like a roller, a spray can, and uh, I think a marker or something. Um, all right. Let me just check at the rest of these spots. That the joint that's off of uh, the 59th Street Bridge that's still running to this day. Dude, I can't even. Do you know when you did that? <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was New Year's. Okay. Everyone was like fucking party, and I was like, "This is a perfect fucking time to do this." I did recon the night before. I went and I saw the door, and you know that credit card thing works in a door. Yeah. <laughs> you can open the door that way. Right. If it's loose. Anyway, I went up. I did recon. I, I opened Jimmy the door. I went up there and I counted the bricks to where to drop the lines, and I marked them, and then I left. And then I waited for New Year's to come. And Diva drove me there. She was waiting downstairs. And um, you know, the fucking crazy thing is going into that building, the hallway was so narrow. Like there was the staircase and then the walkway. The walkway must have been like maybe three feet wide. It was so narrow. And I'm walking with this really long extension pole and a five-gallon bucket of paint. 
Um, so I'm trying to maneuver like around the turns, yeah, like without hitting walls or doors with the pole. So I finally do get up there. I was just like, Jesus, that just getting through the maze. People don't know going fi- up to five the top. gallon weighs probably like I don't know. What do you think? Sixty pounds? Yeah, that shit's heavy. Yeah, definitely. So I got up there, and the thing is, is like. I had to extend that pole fully and I had to pour the paint on the other side of the roof to blot the roller. And then bringing it up, bringing it down is like a hammer, you know, because it's so flexible at the top. Mm -hmm. So you have to run to the middle as it's coming down to try to like not have it hit the roof. Because the the thump that it's going to make, if you're in that apartment, you're going to hear it. I think only graffiti writers are going to be able to relate to that because as you're saying it, like I've, I've done a handful of rollers or whatever and I think about it and I'm like, yeah, I, I don't think people understand. It's got to be pretty crazy for you to see the level that the kids are taking it to these days with the rollers. Like, Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's with the nuts. outlines and all of that, it yeah. is pretty awesome. They got to be using whiz rollers or something like that to yeah. do those. Yeah, seriously. But hats off to those kids doing that. But that, that piece has been running, I'd, I'd say, maybe 20 years now. Yeah. And everyone was like partying. It was the best time to do it. Because if you look across the street from that building, there's this big high-rise building and just nothing but glass. Right. So people could just see out. And then the tram's going by. Mm -hmm. But yeah, everyone was just so fucked up that night. I was just like, I did it and then went home. Yeah. (laughs) Classic spot. I'm shocked on how much much play that got. Um, When did you first get into painting tunnels? Uh... And what years were you doing tunnels the most? And have you ever had any close calls on, on those missions in particular? Yeah. Um, I'd say 98, 99. Rebs was doing, he had this idea to do the, his whole autobiography down there. Yeah, that, that started in 98, 99? Maybe even before that, maybe 97. I'm not too sure of the years. But it's in that time frame, though. Um but yeah, he had this idea to go down there and do that. So I did the first couple with him or whatever. We got chased on the G, in the G tunnel. So we had to leave the ladder there. So it was fucked up. So when we left, I was like, you know, we got to come up with a better system with the ladder. So I built this wood ladder that, you know, it's in two pieces. I had like these clips on it that kept it together. And then you pulled... You know, unclip it and then you just drop the top part into the bottom part because there's like sleeves on both mm-hmm. sides that so just slips right into you built this shit yeah nice yeah. it's a beautiful little wood ladder perfect for that what he was doing yeah and so yeah we was doing that and then we had a close call to, by the manhattan bridge there when the, when the train goes into the tunnel one train was coming when we were going in and then the other train was coming i was just like oh shit so we there's only the cutout in the wall. Mm-hmm. And these trains are moving fast like, right. through there. And like we had to just stop and stay in that cutout. The breeze from the trains, like it just shakes your whole body. If you ever want to feel alive, <laughs> you stand in that, that hole yeah. with two trains going by, man. It's just like, holy shit. Now, Attack has told me a lot about it because uh, he spent a lot of time in tunnels. I've, I've never stepped foot in a tunnel, believe it or not. Really? Yeah, I think it's because I, I have like a crazy fear of rats for some reason. Dude, yo, you want to hear something crazy? It's like the whole time we've been writing graffiti down there, I yeah. never saw a rat. Yeah, you told the me that. The only place I see a rat is on a train station. Yeah, you told me that. And that, that kind of made me... You don't like, even ah, hear maybe, uh, Nothing. Yeah. Who knows, man? Maybe, maybe I'll, maybe I'll go down there. You one have day. to owe it to yourself, man. You're in New York. You got to get a feeling. I know, nah. You're right. You're right. Um, so you, you started that in '98, '99. Um, you said you did the first couple of pages with him. Yeah, and then you know, I, I was going hard with him for a little while. Yeah. But then I was like, you know what? Because he was going in daytime. Uh huh. Like doing it, like, yeah, he was on a mission. Yeah. And then he started bringing other graffiti writers down there. And the other graffiti writers were bringing magazine people down there. What and they mean? were taking photos. Oh, okay. To put in these little zines. Yeah. And I told Rev, yo, this is getting too crazy. You're letting too many people know about this. You know, it's funny that you say that because uh, I think he's referred to you as Mr. Antisocial before. Yeah. You've, I've heard that name associated with you. And I, I, I consider him as being like not a social, like kind of a mysterious. Well, you know, figure. that's what bugged me out is that, you know, he became so social. I was just like, 
I guess he was just looking for company to be down there with. Sure. Or whatever. But he was doing solo missions, so I, I, maybe that's not it. I don't know what the reasoning was. Yeah. But he let a lot of people onto it. Yeah. When I went to Pink and Smith's house and Lady Pink mentioned it, and I was just like, wow. So it's out there. Mm-hmm. So that's when I, I shied away. Got you. I was like, all right, so this is your this is your dream. I'm going to back up a little. Got gotcha. you. And then... Yeah, it was just too many people knew. And that was his downfall. Right, because eventually... Yeah, because I, he, he let Adder... Adder called him, that guy Adder. You know, Scuff was right back in the day. He was like, you know, that kid's a rat, this, that, and the other thing. And I was just like, you know... And that's a big reason why they were going over me, too, because I was hanging out with Adder. And the only reason I was hanging out with Adder is because PG brought him to a wall that we were painting. Gotcha. And he was like a fan. Yeah. But, you know, Scuff was like, yo, you hanging out with him? And they started going over me. And I was just like, you know, I'm not going to let anyone dictate who I'm going to hang out with. Right. But, I, you know, he was right. Because, like, a lot of people that told me they'd done shit with Adder, it was just weird. They got a weird vibe. Like, they were being set up. Dude, I low-key want to wanna do a feature with Adder at some point mm-hmm. and just ask him all the questions about all the rumors and all that. Because I saw some magazine that I think you passed on to me because you blessed me, and I appreciate that. Like, oh, they're all – I got these things sealed in plastic now, but you blessed me with a lot of magazines. And uh, one of them I saw, he, like, did a whole feature, like, addressing shit. But I feel like there's a, still, like, so much to address. Um but yeah, that's interesting to hear. Cause didn't you tell me a story too, where you like defended him against like him getting his paint robbed or something? Oh yeah, like that. Stack. Stack was Stack had beef with him or whatever, probably because of scoff. Um, he was painting a wall. He came down to the uh, chocolate factory in Williamsburg or whatever. He was we gave him a spot, so he was painting a wall, and Stack had beef with him or whatever. And he comes running around the block because I was like around the block or whatever. He's like, Stack's around the corner. He just threw a bottle at me and this, that, and the other thing. And I was just like, really? So I, I go around, and Stack's like bagging up his paint. And I was like, what are you doing? He was like, oh, I'm taking his paint. I was like, no, you're not. I mean, leave his paint right there, whatever. You got beef with him, then fight him. You're not going to take his paint. He's painting my wall. So anyway, Stack was like, all right. So I was like, fight him, matter. So Stack locked him up like three times or whatever, choking him out. So I was just like, all right, so do you feel better now? All right, now leave. So, and then and then he just jetted. Bro, these stories are crazy. You want to hear something crazy? It's like PM. I gave PM a spot on that building too. PM and best best writer on Instagram, I think. But go ahead, go ahead. All right, so PM had a spot on that wall too, or whatever, and he had beef with Stack. Okay. PM and, and Stack had beef? Yeah. Okay. I don't know what the beef was or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I left PM there painting and then I'm by my girl's house or whatever. And PM's walking down the block. I was like, yo, what happened? He was like, yo, Stack showed up or whatever, and I jet it. He left all his paint there. So Stack got that that time. Damn. He got man. that paint. Sick. Uh, it's, it's cool for you to be able to tell these stories, too. I hope nobody gets their panties in a knot over this shit because we're talking about old, you know, yeah, I'm just, I'm just spitting but, the truth, you know? Yeah, that's like, the thing. We're, we're, you're, you're, you're not telling any lies, man. You've seen this shit, and you were there. So, um I'm trying to think of some other people. Uh, Ezo, mm-hmm. like that, I considered Ezo a painting partner of yours. Yeah, uh, um, he did become a painting partner of mine. Yeah, when did you guys link up? And like, what, what, what was your kind of like agenda at the time? Like, was it was it a street heavy agenda? Or? It was a street heavy agenda. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it started out with because I I, I remember Ezo from the Queens. He was a Queens writer by Queens Center Mall over there. And then I knew like a bunch of Queens writers, like this guy Rio, BC, uh, this guy Prose. They always used to hang out in a park over there. I think it was Hoffman Park. It's a park right on Queens Boulevard there. Mm-hmm. Um, so they used to go to all the spots, that the graffiti spots, or whatever. And I remember Ezo's piece stood out above the rest. And I remember the character he did, he did a RAMO piece. And I was just like, oh, shit. And I, I questioned him about that, like, when we bumped heads or whatever. And he was like, yeah, I did that for my girlfriend. It was Ra- Ramona. Gotcha. And I was like, oh, shit. So anyway, how I ran into Izo is because I went to go to scene show. I never go to shows. Never. Why not? You just don't like the... No, I just don't like 
graffiti writers. <laughs> <laughs> they just, I mean, it's just, it's just too much. There's a lot of rah rah bullshit. Uh huh. Like you know, people got shit to prove. I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm a mellow dude. Mm -hmm. I just, I just don't like being around chaos. So Seam is having a show. So Rebs was like, "Yo, you want to go to the show?" Or whatever. I was like, "You know what? I never go to shows." Seam, you know, this guy's like Godfather graffiti. Fuck it, I'll go. So we went, and um, I'm with Tabitha. And Tabitha has, she had a little collection of these little black books. I actually have them, seven of them. But um, she had a little collection. She carried this black book around everywhere she went. She's got most of the writers in New York in those books. I think that with the exception of J.A. Anyway, um, she wanted to meet Scene, so I was like, all right, fuck it, we'll go. So we went. So Scene's standing there talking to Chino or whatever. And the, Chino's kind of dismissive to her. Or whatever, but you know, then Seam was like, "Oh, what's up?" And she was like, "Oh, could you sign my book or whatever?" So he was like, "Oh, sure." So he signed in the book or whatever, and then she's flipping through to find a page, and I guess Chino saw the PE mm -hmm. in the book, and she was, he was like, Yo, "You know this dude?" And then she was like, "Oh yeah, it's sure, that's my husband," or whatever. So they were like, "Oh shit!" So I, I got to meet Chino. I never met Chino before, so we were both shitting. Good dude, man. Shout out Chino. He's a good dude. He's yeah. a good dude. We, yeah, I liked Chino a lot. But anyway, um, Izo was at that same show or whatever, and he was going through the book, and he saw the PE. He was like, oh, shit, you know. He's TPA, and Tabitha was like, oh, he's right there. So then we started shooting the shit or whatever, and then I was like, yeah, I remember your piece in Queens, this, that, and the other thing. And then before you know it, we were hanging out. So then we started, we started hanging out hard. It started, like, just copping tags around town or whatever and then he was doing pieces inviting me so i would go do some pieces with whatever uptown that's how i met case and all of those dudes part oh wow tds were those guys like uh those guys were active around the same years that you were active right they were just yeah, in different yeah. different areas of the yeah. city we were, we were painting walls together you know they would gather up and paint walls or whatever i'd be there painting with them or whatever i never got to meet those guys so that was cool that was very <clears> cool. Met revolt Zephyr, all through Ezo. Wow. Because okay. I'm not a social person, you know. It's like I see them up and all of that and see their pieces throughout the years. Yeah. But I don't really socialize with graffiti writers. So if I do meet a graffiti writer and they know a lot of graffiti writers, nine times out of ten, I'm going to bump into them. So of the of the two of you, you and Tabitha, she was the more social person. Yeah. 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 Definitely um, a social butterfly. You know, her, her thing was always like, you know, if you're not documented, then you were never there. Yeah, and I never really thought about that, you know. It was just like, I just did my thing, and I didn't think people paid attention until I started painting. I came out in '95, '96, started painting the Chocolate Factory, and so many graffiti writers heard that I was painting there, and they were stopping by with black books to sign, and they were bringing me photos, and I was just like, wow, this is like a thing. People were like paying attention to what the hell was going on. Yeah, it's funny how like if you <clears throat> if you step out of it for a minute you you forget what that community is like and it almost makes that community like wonder what what's going on with you what's up so yeah you well step you back know the in, thing is is like i i was never into the socializing and all that bullshit like i'll do graffiti but i don't like seeing graffiti you know it's like it, it's just something i do and I, I shut it off i go home yeah you know and even like when i paint now in present time like, I'll do pieces or whatever. I don't want to socialize with people. I just, you know, but they're there when I'm painting, so. Yeah. And they're, they're cool people. Don't get me wrong. It's just I'm not real social. Yeah, I think uh, sometimes some of the best people that I know, like, both in and out of graffiti, say that they're not social, but it just means that uh, they're actually, like, just a good person basically because there's there's so many weirdos out here there's there's no <laughs> tell me about you it. you know what i mean there's so much funny shit that like most people that are are you know cool comic collected as i was saying are, they just tend to not want to be around like a big crowd like that no, you know no. it's just it's too chaotic you know yeah just, i'm so used to just doing my thing and you know it's just my my social circle is very small right very small um a lot of other people here. Uh, I mean, it was cool to see, well, like, bumping heads with, like, old graffiti. Because, like, I remember people back in the day or whatever, and they're still writing today, which is a beautiful thing. And, like, I got to hang out with Adam, like, hard. Like, 
atomic these, at these present times now. Yeah, with the whole LOC crew. Yeah. And those guys are awesome, man. They're all fucking really good hearted people. Yeah. I see you still get a wall in with them every now and yeah, then. I saw yeah. some on uh, Broadway pop up. Mm -hmm. It's always it's always so funny to me, man. When I'll just be driving around and I'll just see like a LOC production like out of nowhere pop up. Those guys know? love to paint, man. Yeah, you know they have a little barbecue and shit. They love to paint. That's sick. I love I love seeing that. Um, KP. Oh. <laughs> also, feel free to like if I if I say somebody's name and you're like ah, I don't feel like talking about that or whatever, like you yeah. can just say pass. You know, what I, I don't mean? mind. You know, it's like these are all old stories and shit like that. You know, it's like to me, I just he's he's like has one of the best like fill ins and everything. But I, I think I mentioned him to you once before, and you had a couple good KP stories. But yeah, you guys had beef back in the day too. Yeah. So anyway, I think KP felt some type of way that I was hanging out with AT. They were really tight. You know, it's like, like really tight, like inseparable tight. It was kind of weird. So anyway, I started hanging out with AT or whatever. And, and KP was like, I guess, popping shit to AT or whatever. So I don't know how it got into it, but he was on the phone. He called my girlfriend's house or something. He got the number. So he was like, you know, I'm at AT's house now and this, that, and the other thing. I was like, oh, yeah, bet. Wait there. I'll be there half hour. So I go with Rye. R-I-E, this guy, Andy. Yeah. So Rye walks in the door. TPA guy, right? Yeah. Yeah. Rye walks in the door, and KP punched him right in the face. Boom. And then he's coming at me. So I was just like, oh, shit. So we got into it immediately as soon as he opened the door. Whatever. So I yoked him up, took him to the ground. He's trying to get up or whatever. And you know the spindles, like in the staircases? Mm -hmm. He's like trying to push off the spindles to get up, and he was breaking them. So AT's like, yo, take that shit outside. You're breaking up the house. You're breaking up the house. So I was like, all right, yo, I'm going to let you go. We're going to go outside and do this. So I let him go. So Heat shows up. He, he passed away too. God rest his soul. He was a good dude. Um, he's taking pictures of us, like fist fighting and shit. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> yeah, I wish, I wish I had saw those. Oh, yeah. Then. But yeah. Um, and then we walked away from each other. And that was cool. And then... Another time I was on the L train and the train stopped right in front of KP and the doors open. And I was like, all right, so what's up? We doing this? <laughs> and then he was like, nah, let's just dead this shit or whatever. And I was like, all right, cool. And, and I was actually turning his KPs into King Peak ones. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's another classic beef move, like taking somebody's shit. And just... Yeah, I did the same thing with EA. I put the P in the front and the K on the end. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Yeah, that's good stuff. Um, all right, since we're on the topic of some beef, what about Dessa? Oh, Dessa. Yeah. All right, so Dessa, he knew this, Tabitha knew this girl, FNS, right? So Dessa started popping shit about my girl. About Diva? Yeah. So I was just like, I was in a chat room, some AOL fucking chat room. I can't imagine you in a chat room. Like Dude, I just can't. It, it was it was beyond me too. I was just like, <laughs> what the fuck am I doing? Yeah. So anyway, I'm in the chat room and he's popping all the shit. And I was just like, dude, you could say whatever you want behind that fucking keyboard. Mm. I mean, just keep going, man. Keep going. Because like Dessa's face is gonna be a mess up when fucking Pete Crusher catch you. Seriously. So anyway. You were spitting bars. Yo, dude, I was just like, I he had me so fucking irate. You know, I was just like, you don't talk about my girl and I'll fucking yeah. pay the price. Yeah. So anyway, it's like, he just kept going with it. And she, he, um, Diva knew this girl, FNS, mm -hmm. and he started dating her or whatever. So anyway, I was trying my damnedest to find that way he lived. And I, I, I went through DG. DG didn't want to tell me because he was kind of tight with Dessa or whatever. That was the first time DG wouldn't give it up. But you know who gave it up? Adder. Oh my Adder God. was like, I know where he lives. Oh, man. He's going like, to right, cool. gonna want to do an interview after this I one. Was like, I was like, <laughs> give me his address. Yeah. So he gave me his address or whatever. I waited till it was dead, like he, when he forgot about it. And then I went to his house. Because I, I told him in that chat room, I was like, listen, dude, you got me so fucking pissed off. And I know you live with your mother. If she answers the door, I'm going to punch her in the fucking face. Oh, my God. Seriously, man. Damn. <laughs> so anyway, I waited till it, you know he forgot about it, uh -huh. basically, and then I went to his house. I fucking rang the bells. Mother came out. She had a little dog, and I was like, "Where the fuck is your son?" 
she was like, oh, and then he came to the window. And Grant, mind you, the sidewalk is right here, and his window was like right there. He's lived on the first floor uh -huh. or whatever. And I was like, come outside. I want to talk to you. And he was like, nah, I'm not coming outside. I was like, come outside, dude. He was like, nah, I'm not coming outside. I was like, yo, dude, you either apologize to my girl or I'm climbing through that fucking window and I'll beat the shit out of you in your own fucking house, man. So I was like, Diva's around the corner. I'm going to bring her around the fucking corner and you're going to apologize. And then you're going to apologize to me. So I brought her around. He apologized. Said, I'm sorry. It's not any other thing. All right, cool. I deaded it. That's a truly romantic graph story right there. But check this out. After I deaded it, him and Ketch, I had a, an outline or fill-in on Flushing Avenue. And they both, he nipped the one side of my P and Ketch nipped the E. They like boxed me in on, yeah. on my shit. And I was like, really? You want to fucking play games? Okay. And he, he had moved at that point. So I was like, now I need to find out where he lives again. So I found out where he lived through DG. DG gave it up. Oh, shit. So he lived in Glendale. So I went to his house or whatever. I was like, where the fuck is your son to his mom? <laughs> she was like, he's not here. I was like, tell him I was here. I'll be back or whatever. And then I, I just didn't go back. I was like, fuck it. And then when PG passed away, I saw him at the wake. And he was just like some big dude or whatever. And I was just like, what the fuck is he going to do? I mean, seriously? I mean, like. I was like, dude, I would cave your fucking face in right now, but you look like you're dying already. So I'm going to let it go. So I let it go. Got you, got you. Uh, but yeah, now, I mean, like, we're liking each other's photos on fucking Instagram. Oh, it's, okay. It's, everything's fucking Oh, that's great to hear, man. I, I, you know, I got, you know, I got props for that kid, man. He dedicated yeah. his, he's just like Kez. He dedicated his life to graffiti. Nah, for sure. And there's something to be said for that. Definitely. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah, I no, mean, it's, I don't. It's, I don't live graffiti like that. Nah, nah. Or, well, I feel like out of the people that I've met, like you're you 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 represent graffiti in a lot of ways to me. I know that I just try to stay consistent through the years, right? Like you know, I'll take a hiatus. I'll come back and do some big shit. I mean, Smith said it. He was like, you know, you don't have to go all in the way you're going in. Uh -huh. He was like, you could just drop a couple of fill-ins and people are gonna fucking talk. I don't think anybody from your like like generation is still coming out and putting an illegal like roller up. Well, you know, that's, that's the side of that, the LA I didn't want to get pigeonholed into being some old school graffiti writer that goes to fucking shows and they talk about graffiti and what they did back in the day. Yeah. Mostly just bust out the fucking tea and crumpets and just <laughs> fucking do it. You know, yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. just fucking go out and do something, man. I, I mean, mean like, not a lot of these guys are still physically like hanging on the way that you are though. You know what I mean? Like seriously, it's, it's the reason why, cause they're sitting around fucking doing nothing. There we go. I always have to be on the move. Yeah. Always. I can't sit still for fucking like this like sitting here this I know. Long, it yeah. says I can't sit still. I get antsy, you know. It's like I gotta do some shit. And I'm always down for a mission, you know. It's the adrenaline rush that I'm actually addicted to. Just being, you know, the whole you're not supposed to be there. Right. And it, you, you know, fucking blood's pumping. Like that spot I, I recently did in Queens, that that fucking that wall. Sure. Off the with the roller. Off the that the, the what was that? The what stretch of fuck? That's that's a highway, right? Like it's going towards the airport. That's why I wanted that. It's spot. right by the Midtown Tunnel, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, that spot I went to, I fucking I I did recon on it. There was a scaffold there. It was beautiful, right against the wall. I was like, oh shit, they were building a new gas station. I was like, bet I'm going to do that wall. I mean, like I I was wondering how to get up there for so long, and then they had that scaffold, and I was like, oh shit, cool. I go the night I go. I get the fucking five gallon bucket of paint over the gate, slide the pole under, and I, I jump over the gate and I look and the scaffold's gone. I was like, what the fuck out of here, really? So I'm looking around. It's a construction site. They had a four foot ladder, an eight foot ladder, plywood. So I was like, I'm like fucking MacGyvering shit over here. Yeah. So I see, you know, those. Uh, steel poles they put in the ground like barriers so mm -hmm. like you don't drive into something or whatever there was yeah. three of them in the corner against the building i was like oh shit so i got a piece of plywood put that on there made a platform that was about four feet high mm -hmm. got the eight foot ladder opened it up put it on top of that and then i got the four foot ladder to walk up onto the platform and then go up the eight foot ladder and i fucking i extended the pole so it reached the tip of the 
the edge of the roof. And then I went up and I fucking pulled the pole up and I had, uh, I usually use a string around my wrist with tied to the five gallon bucket. So when I get up there, I just pull the bucket up. And I, you don't have to put your exact age out there, <coughs> but if you, I mean, I really don't see anybody doing it like from when you started till now from 70, what was it? 79. Yeah. Till 20, That's 2024. That's when I was going hard. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, hats off, man. I, oh, thanks, man. You did that. You you know, you're doing that in between, like, working a lot of hours, oh too, man. Oh, my God, seriously. So, yeah, yeah nah, it's, it's... It's it's a lot of work. Like, if you think about it, it's like, the last role I did off the BQE, that was a beautiful spot. They painted that wall black. Ah, uh, man, I know. Like, I was I, like, I oh, loved, my God. I loved seeing that, bro. Like, but it hadn't got... been a while, like, in between rollers and shit. Like, uh -huh. I did the one in Queens, and then I, I saw that BQE spot. I was like, oh, I have to, I have to do that spot. So I get up there, whatever. It was it was a piece of cake getting up there, setting up and all of that. But when I had the roller extended and all of that, I was just like, damn, I'm out of practice, man. I was like throwing that roller up and my arms were like, holy shit. <laughs> I had to take a couple of breathers doing that one, man. Yeah. Seriously. But, you know, I pulled it off. That was a beautiful fucking spot. Oh, man, I, I, got, stuck, I got stuck up on the BQE a couple times right at that spot because really? the traffic slows down. Yeah, like when you're... It's like right before the tillery exit or whatever. Yeah. yeah, it just it slows down right there. So I got stuck a couple times and traffic and shit. <laughs> yeah, I remember telling my girl about it. I was like, "Yo, that's you know," and I was like, "I I, I know this guy up here. Like, it's very impressive, man. Doing it doing it all these years." Yeah, um, yeah. All right, slash FTR. Love that dude, man. Yeah. He actually texted me to see if I, I'm. Because I'm supposed to give him a canvas to put into some shell. He's another guy. If you could uh, just ask him. A lot of people, you know, a lot of writers are hesitant to do this. I'm trying to do these interviews, like, as best I can. Yeah. Because I really want people to get their, you know, tell their story or hey, listen, whatnot. I could put you in touch with writers if he, you want. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Slash is definitely one of one of those people. Um, He's awesome, man. How long have you known Slash? What's your What's your guys' history? I've known Slash. I met Slash through PG. Okay. He was he um he's a friend of PG's family. Got you. So he's pretty tight with the family still to this day. And he's getting more active now. I feel like. Oh my god, man! He fucking went in. Yeah. You know, his shit is just awesome, man. And that's been like, in the past two years or he something. He piece like is that. big, dude. Right. Like I I linked up with him to do a piece one time. He, he did his outline. I was like, oh my god, I'm I'm so used to working like maybe eight nine feet long. Sure. <laughs> like maybe five feet high. Yeah. Like, he stretched his whole shit out. I was like, oh, shit. So I had to pull one fucking rabbit out of my ass for that one, man. <laughs> Just piecing outside my comfort zone. Yeah. There's a couple of the TMR guys that do that, too. I feel like Saint and uh, Scent go super big when I see them. Like, they'll get a legal wall and they'll just yeah. go like, It's like, damn. Yeah. Um, Giz. Giz. Yeah. Like, he's a younger guy to you, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so how how, uh, how how did he come into your kind of, like, periphery? All right, and so Giz, I met through DG. 